Hello, I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy, and welcome to my deep dive on OpenPose and ControlNet version 1.1. This video is meant to be supplementary to my previous deep dive on OpenPose for ControlNet 1.0, which only includes body positioning, and will mainly focus on the new and desperately needed ability to map the face and hands. So, if you are just getting started with OpenPose, I recommend you check out that video first, and there is a link for it in the description below. In this video, I'm going to cover faces first, then hands, and then finally put them all together. Before we get into that, let's talk about the preprocessors for OpenPose 1.1. Confusingly, there are now five preprocessors for OpenPose. The regular OpenPose preprocessor is the same as OpenPose in ControlNet 1.0 and will only detect the basic OpenPose skeleton. The OpenPose face preprocessor detects both the body skeleton and the face. The aptly named OpenPose Face Only preprocessor does exactly what it says and only detects faces. The OpenPose Full preprocessor looks for everything the basic OpenPose skeleton, faces, and hands. Finally, the OpenPose Hand preprocessor will detect the basic OpenPose skeleton and the hands. Unfortunately, none of these can detect hands by themselves. Furthermore, in my testing, I couldn't get OpenPose to detect hands unless they are connected to a body. So, a career in hand modeling is still an option. OpenPose Face estimates position of facial features using a whopping 70 points. 16 of these points form the outline of the face from eye level down to the jawline. Each eye has 6 points for the shape of the eye, with an additional point for the iris, showing the direction of the gaze. Above the eyes, there are five points for each of the eyebrows. Below, on the nose, there are four points for the bridge of the nose and an additional five points for the shape of the nostril. Finally, the mouth is formed using 18 points. Ten of these are for the outside shape of the lips, while the other eight are for the internal shape of the lips. Open pose can definitely capture a lot of details on the face. In fact, the face has more points than the body and hands put together. But to use that detail, we would have to be able to map it first, so let's look at the limitations of the preprocessor. Which is why I tested many, many images to see when the face was detected and when it wasn't. Like all preprocessors, OpenPose has a slider for resolution which controls the resolution of the map. Increasing resolution had inconsistent results on detection. Sometimes it helped, sometimes it hurt. If you really need an image to be detected, it's worth playing with this as a last resort, but don't expect too much. Interestingly, the size of the image didn't have much impact on the effect of detection. I was able to shrink 1440p screenshots down to one-fifth of the original size without impacting detection. What impacts detection the most is the size of the face as a proportion of the size of the image. In my testing, I found that you will get the best results if your face is at least 5% of the dimension of the image, which for a standard 1080p image is roughly 75 pixels in height and width. Between 5% and 3%, you get a range of results from full detection to partial detection to no detection. 3% of a 1080p image is roughly 50 pixels in width and height. And finally, below 3%, you really only get partial detection or nothing at all. While face detection is not as robust as detection of the basic skeleton, it is closer than I expected given the complexity of faces. As you might recall from my previous video, Figures needed to be about 20% of the dimension of the image for the OpenPose skeleton to be detected. Proportionally, adult humans are typically 7 to 8 heads in height, so the minimum to have a decent chance of facial detection is between 21% and 24% of the image. To get good detection, though, you need the figure to be between 35% and 40% of the image, which is almost twice as large. Now let's take a breather from the boring, precise math stuff and take a look at the more qualitative aspects of detection. In terms of angle, the face will be detected from head-on and in profile, but as the face turns away from the viewer, detection will start to struggle, then fail. As a rule of thumb, if you can't see one of the eyes, the face won't be detected. For anime, face detection was a mixed bag. More realistic anime styles could get picked up, but if cartoony features are present, detection will likely fail. Interestingly, detection seemed to work better on faces that were further away instead of close-ups. For cartoon styles less realistic than anime, the chances of detection are slim, 
you might get a partial face or a distorted face. I also tested out alien and robotic humanoid faces, and detection was inconsistent. I believe the main factor here is whether there are patches of color or shading that interrupt the features being mapped. Interestingly, unlike the basic open pose skeleton, I was actually able to detect the face of a kitten using face only, but that was the only animal that worked at all. Next we are going to cover the mapping and detection for hands. OpenPose hand estimates the position and posture of hands using 21 points for each hand. The origin point is located roughly at the bottom of the palm or wrist, then splits off for each finger. The mapping for the thumb is unique and has a second point within the hand corresponding to the muscular bulge leading to the thumb, then the knuckle, the joint, and finally the thumb tip. The mapping for the other four fingers consists of four points, which are the knuckle, the first and second joint, and the fingertip. Unfortunately, despite having five whole preprocesses for open pose now, there is no option that will only detect hands. To make matters worse, detection of hands seems to be linked to the rest of the open pose skeleton. Much like faces, changing the map resolution can hurt or help detection of hands, and the dimensions of the image matter much less than the proportional size of a hand within the image. In terms of size, I managed to detect hands as small as 4% of the image's resolution which is roughly 55 pixels in height and width in a 1080p image. Proportionally, hands are about 75% of the size of faces. If you do the math, this translates to a figure size between 38% and 43% of the image, which is slightly larger than the range for the best detection of faces. However, detection wasn't as consistent as faces and could just fail, even at substantially larger proportions. I believe contrast plays an important role here because low contrast images really struggled, and surprisingly, anime did better than I expected. Hand detection was also surprisingly strong in less realistic cartoon styles. Much like an overzealous nun, OpenPose also really, really doesn't like it if hands are touching. In most of these cases, touching hands will result in only a single hand being detected. Much like faces and, well, any other hand, detection of hands on humanoid robots and aliens was also spotty. Sometimes, the outermost part of the skeleton wasn't detected, which caused hand detection to fail. Other times, even though the hands were clearly visible, it seemed that the coloration or contrast caused detection to fail. That wraps up detection. Next, we are going to cover weight, control steps, and the range of those that preserve specific features from the open pose maps. As a quick refresher, Weight can be set between 0 and 2 and represents how strongly the map is used during generation. We'll come back to it in a little bit. In older versions of the automatic 1111 web GUI, guidance was a single parameter that controlled the number of steps ControlNet was used for. Now guidance has been broken down into two separate parameters, starting control step and ending control step. For both of these, the value can be set between 0 and 1, which represents the portion of the total steps that will be used with ControlNet. If your generation has 20 steps, and you set any control step to 0.5, the map will stop being used after 10 steps. If you set the starting control step to 0.5, the map would only start being used after 10 steps. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that any control step, formerly just guidance, can be set as low as 0.5 for most samplers without losing much accuracy to the map because earlier steps are where the major details are cemented. The one exception I noticed is the shape of the eyes and face, which need longer with the control net to be kept. Everything else, eye position, hand position, and the rest of the skeleton was fine down to 0.5. However, there are a couple samplers which do not have the same behavior for any control step. The UniPC sampler output does not change regardless of the number of steps used. DPM fast was less impacted by any control step and only started to lose adherence to the map below a guidance of 0.15. Finally, DPM Adaptive can be more sensitive to any control step than the other samplers. At 30 steps for DPM Adaptive, any control step can start having an impact as high as 0.7. Here's a chart showing how any control step impacts different samplers. Green means the map is followed, yellow means the map is partially followed, and red means that you'll get few if any details from the map. For a starting control step, Cementing major image details early on cuts the opposite way. Instead of doing basically nothing for half of its range, 
Values as low as 0.25 for a starting control step can lose most of the details from the map. Adjusting starting control step also leads to additional complexity in figures in the image, which is not desirable in most cases. I would guess this is because generation is essentially restarted once control net is engaged. For these reasons, I usually leave starting control step at zero. I'm sure there are some niche uses for it that I'm not creative enough to think of, but the vast majority of the time, I think you should leave this alone. In case you really want to use starting control step, here is a chart showing where impact begins at different values. Which leaves weight as the undisputed king for adjusting control net. Unlike the other two, weight has a continuous and gradual effect on the output across its entire range. Some control net modules, like Canny and SoftEdge, can overfit to the map when weight is too high and result in low quality images. However, OpenPose rarely, if ever, suffers from overfitting and can utilize the entire range for weight effectively. Different parts of the OpenPose map have different weights needed to maintain them. We're going to start at the maximum weight and work our way downwards to show which features we will lose along the way. The hardest piece to preserve was surprisingly facial and eye shape. This is most noticeable when your map is for a man with a strong jawline and your prompt is for women. Since most models bias towards female features, OpenPose really only overcomes that tendency at very high weights between 2 and 1.5, maybe down to around 1 if ControlNet continues to the last step. This was an outlier, as most other details are within a pretty tight range. Hand position is the next thing to fail and starts falling off at weights around 1, but can linger down to around 0.5. The remaining aspects, which are the direction of the gaze, mouth position, position of the face, and position of the body are the most robust. They can start falling off around 0.75, but you still have some chance until around 0.25 or so. Putting it all together, here is a chart showing the weights at which different features start getting lost at. If you want to keep face and eye shape, you'll need to keep any control step near 1.0. Given that there aren't too many consequences to pumping up weight and control net steps for open pose, you should be able to balance out the details you need in a single control net most of the time. The only scenario that might benefit from using multi-control net would be if you want to keep or lose facial resemblance. In this case, you would have OpenPose hands or another control net model as your first control net, and OpenPose face as your secondary control net. The last thing to cover is generating images at high resolutions with OpenPose. OpenPose isn't as good at generating high resolution images compared to other control net models, though it can still go substantially beyond the base resolution for the model. Like other control net models, Twinning and having too much show in the image is still a problem and can be best controlled by being very careful with the prompt and increasing the weight. Like with depth, you will want to increase CFG when generated at higher resolutions to counteract the muddiness and desaturation that occurs. With all the numbers and details flying around, it's easy to lose track of the big picture. So let's put things together and talk about which problems OpenPose 1.1 solves and which it doesn't. Hands are probably the biggest and most stubborn nemesis of AI art. OpenPose 1.1 is great about positioning the hand in the output if the hand gets detected and mapped. However, that is a big if. Detection of hands frankly isn't very good, and even images you might think would be easy to map still fail. There are still other ways to map hands outside of the preprocessors, but for now, these will be a necessary evil. On the other hand, I think OpenPose face is a game changer. Base Stable Diffusion has a strong bias towards having human figures oriented towards the viewer in the position of the face, body, and eyes. OpenPose 1.1 is great at orienting human figures away from the camera with a couple limitations. First, face detection fails if the face is turned away from the camera much further than the profile. Second, with faces looking to the side, OpenPose can struggle orienting the subject's body. The face itself is oriented correctly. However, the subject's body will often alternate between facing towards and facing away from the viewer. OpenPose 1.1 also allows part of the shape of the face and eyes to be specified. This does require higher weight than other features, but fortunately, the face-only preprocessor allows you to set weights for the face specifically. Finally, OpenPose 1.1 allows you to map facial expressions. The position of the mouth is the most robust, but eyebrow and eye position can come through too. Base Stable Fusion really, really struggles with having faces display any emotion and often comes across as doll-like. 
while careful prompting is still needed, this is a massive step in the right direction. And on that note, please like and subscribe if this video gave you the tools you need to effectively use OpenPose 1.1. Now that we've finished with the OpenPose 1.1 deep dive, I hope you learned everything you wanted to know and more. If you have any questions about Stable Diffusion you want answered, leave a comment, and who knows, I might make a video about it. Till next time.